We are connected on this journey of self-development. We are connected in service one to another. We are connected in our search to be whole. We are all connected in the story of redemption. Yet the greatest connection is to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to the Brinson Connection with your host, Apostle Dr. Sylvester Paul Brinson III. God bless you and may heaven smile upon you. We are excited of what God is doing, how God has blessed us and all the things that God is doing. Welcome, welcome. I am your host, Apostle Dr. Sylvester Paul Brinson III, and we're so happy. I am the Dean of the Brinson Connection. And so I want to welcome you to this sharing time, what God is doing in the land. First of all, let me say, how are you? Fine, fine, fine. I'm, I'm hoping that all is well. Well, we have been in a series on equipping the saints equipping the saints to do the work of the ministry. This series of teaching or this teaching series has come from Ephesians chapter four. And I have my Bible with me over here and some notes. I am doing some things and uh, we are excited. And so today we have started just a summary. We talked about the gifts. We talked about God's gifts. Everybody born into the world, God has given you a gift or giftings. When you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and become a believer, the Holy Spirit gives according to what he wills, gifting and measures of gifts. Then Christ, when he ascended, he left himself in five divisions to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. And so each and all of us, we have some parts of those giftings in some measure. So if we would say on the scale of one to 10, what would be your measure? What is your measure according to your faith? What is your grace gifts of Romans 12 on the scale of one to 10? What percentage do you operate in the God gifting as a, a person in the world? How do you see the world through those eyes? And so when you accept Jesus Christ as Lord, the Holy Spirit gives you gifts as he pleases. So what what gifting group or mix do you have on a scale of one to 10? What is it? So you're going to add your God giving gifts of Romans 12 to your gifts of first Corinthians 12. Then some of you all have the equipping gifts of equipping the saints to do the work of the ministry, whether it be apostle a prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher? What is the measure and the sphere of your influence? And so as you put all of those gifts together, we ask you to take a look at your personality. What type of personality did you have? Are you in, introvert, extrovert? Are you judging? Or how do you see the world? You pull all those things together and that becomes you. So guess what? The body of Christ, the church implements the kingdom. When you pray, say, our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us daily, daily, the daily bread, the knees and forgive us our debts as we forgive. So those are the things that we need to pray for the kingdom because the church, the body of Christ, the salt of the world, the light of the world implements through our activities and our relationships that model for what the kingdom of God needs to be in the earth. We are his witnesses. And so as we begin to look at it, then as we've gone through all the series, if you missed series, this is series number five. Wow. When I started one, I didn't think it was going to go that that long, but we are in series number five. Go back and uh, look and watch the other series. Go to On Demand TV, HSBN TV, click on On Demand, find my picture, click on it and go back to our archives and watch the other shows and get yourself caught up to where you are and you'll understand where we are on this taping number five. Now, one of the things that I really want to deal with today is, you know, as we look around the church in the body of Christ, we have many apostles. We have many prophets. We have many pastors. We have many evangelists. We have many teachers. Now, I don't know, you know, about the prophetess piece. You know, most people use prophetess 
as a female or the wife of a prophet. A prophetess, well, I don't want to go there. I just know that Paul said there's neither male nor female. That's all I know. There's neither male nor female. So when you use the term prophetess, you go into the gender. Now, the gifts to the body of Christ are not gendered. So any gift that promotes a gender designation, I don't know. I don't want to get into it. That's a whole nother teaching. But uh, Ephesians 5 did not include prophetess. So if you see yourself as an equipper of the saints, then you need to take the tiss off the prophetess. Because in Ephesians, there are no prophetess listed. I know Paul is not crazy. He's consistent. He said there's no male and no female. So you can be a prophetess. If that's the title you put on your task, then stay in the definition of that, that title. I'm not going to argue you. But I will say this. In Ephesians, prophetess is not listed as an equipper of the saints. All right. Think about it. Re you, 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 you read English. He said he gave some to be apostles to be prophets, to be evangelists, to be pastors and teachers. In that listing, there is no gender. So if you're going to say prophetess, then you have to say apostle tris, evangelist tris, pastor tris, teacher tris. There are no trisses, no trisses. And so sometimes we bring on titles because we don't even know why we everybody else do it. Everybody else say it. But I'm a teacher of the word of God. I, I believe in dealing the text. The text is non gender. Paul writes that and he talks about the categories. There is no male nor female, no bond nor free, no Jew nor Greek. So you can't say, well, I'm a black prophet. No, you a prophet. You can't say, well, I'm a slave prophet. No, you a prophet. So why you would you say you a prophetess? No, you a prophet. So we want to take the tisses off. There's no deaconess. Paul didn't say deaconess. He said Phoebe the deacon, Phoebe deacon, Phoebe minister, based upon your interpretation of whatever translation you write. When he said, I send you Phoebe, one of our ministers, which is translated one of our deacons, it didn't say Phoebe the deaconess. It said Phoebe the deacon, the minister. She was equal to everybody else. There was no female right on it. So if we're going to follow the word of God, then we're going to stay with the word of God. I'm going to stay with the word of God. And I'm going to go on the road to say, if you wear the title of a prophetess, and yet in your mind, you know that God has put you in the apostolic listing of apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastor, and teacher, then if you read Ephesians if you cannot find prophetess in that list, drop that title off your name and put the right title on your name because the title is a summary of your assignment. So in the Bite of Christ, we're going to talk about assignments today. Ephesians, it said he gave some to be, not to become, think about it, to be elevated, to be promoted. No, it's a gift. You don't promote. You can't elevate a gift. The gift. He gave some. Now, the only thing the church and we can do, we can confirm it. We can celebrate it. We can consecrate it. We can grow in it. But a gift is just that. He gave some to be. Be your gift. Be your gift. Some to be apostles. Some to be prophets. Some to be evangelists. Some to be pastors. And some to be teachers. That's what I'm dealing with today. So now let's look at it. If we look at the text diligently, I want to really take time out because we've had, you know, different things. We've had the situation on inclusion and, and the doctrine of inclusion, all that. Up, all that's, that's false prophet stuff. The Bible said in the last days, false prophets shall appear. And if it wouldn't be so that even the very elect, if he didn't shorten the days, would be deceived. And so if you look at it, there's also times and situations and shadows, times and shadows of what the last days is going to look like. Because you see men and women that are false prophets and are heir in their doctrine, and yet they have been celebrated because the media, don't mind the media, the media is a full of controversy. Anything that's controversial, the media going to pick it up. 
And just because you was interviewed on the media, you was on CNN, you know, that don't mean nothing. That's because the media understand we want to get this out so we it, it helps our ratings. Building ratings on television networks is not the same as living and preaching sound doctrine sound doctrine. And so therefore there is no private interpretation of scripture. And so when people, false prophets get in the, see a false prophet sometime evolves into a person who knows God, see God, have certain experiences. And based upon the experiences, they begin to try to define God and say, based upon in their mind, God, God wouldn't do that. But that's in your mind. God's mind is not your mind. You know, your, your ways is not God's way. So you just because I, I look pea brain and all our stuff can't conceive that God is a God of love and God wouldn't. That's the way you see it. But God says specifically in his word, what will happen to what? He said what was abomination in his sight. He said what he didn't like. And he talked about that. Paul talked about the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life and all that's in the world. We talk about the, the lust of the flesh and we talk about the gifts of the spirit and the works of the flesh. All of those things are out there. So now it's up to the body of Christ to begin to teach and train, to equip the saints to be the light of the world, to equip the saints to be the salt of the world, the salt of the earth, the light of the world. We must be, we must, we must set the stage. And so the commission is for the saints to go all into the world and preach the gospel to every creature, every nation, every ethnos. So if we are to preach and teach the gospel, then the question is who teach and preaches us. And if the church is supposed to be a uh, God's, the crisis, crisis himself in the earth to be the light of the world and the salt of the earth, then he leaves people in the church community to constantly equip us. Notice it said equip the saints. It didn't say the denomination that the saint is in. It didn't say the reformation or alliance of churches or alliances of groups or, 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 or fellowship alliance of what you're in. You can be in those things, but you are still a saint. If you are a believer in Christ, you're a saint, regardless of the denomination preference, uh, the, the, the fact of where you train or where you relate to, you still are a saint. So the fivefold ministry is given to equip the saints. So let's look at it. So I want to spend some time today and talking about the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher that Christ gave some to be. The church commissions, the church celebrates, the church consecrates, you consecrate yourself, and we grow together as we are reflective of what apostles do, what prophets do, what evangelists do, what pastors do, what, he, what, what, what teachers do, what are the parameters of their assignments, the spheres of their anointings, since there's different activities and divisions and works they are different. There are no cookie cutters. We 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 sometimes make a mistake because I'm apostle. I'm apostle Brinson, but that's not. I don't know about that other person because he's not like me. No, 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 no. There are varieties of the giftings because guess what? There's a varieties of mixes of the people in the body of Christ. If God gives a variety of his gifts and the Holy Spirit gives a varieties of his gifts and Christ gives a variety of his gifts and then there are different measures according to the grace and the faith given us, wow, there's a different variety. So we've got to become sensitive to the different varieties, the different activities and different ministries of God working within himself, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and how he works in the church and in the world for us to be his, what? Disciples and to make disciples. So there's a different variety. So based upon that, then we want to look at it. Wow, wow, wow. Brinson, you know what? I never thought of it like that. Well, you know, our presentation is to get you to think, you know, and you don't, you don't you don't want to agree with me on certain things I say. Well, you know, try the spirit, you know, try the spirit. Do some research on your own. 
do some research on your own. And then when you do your research on your own, then compare it to other people. You know, one of the things that gets people off track is they do research on their own, but they never relate it to anybody. See, you can get a revelation. You can get a, a revelation, but if you don't take your revelation and compare it to other people, you can't get a full illumination on the revelation. So people run around here with revelations, but no illumination. So once you get an illumination on your revelation, you find yourself better being a communicator of that illumination to the revelation. And now in your discussion, Paul says to Timothy, that which you have seen in me and others do. You have to make sure that what you see in me and how others, and they continue in the apostles' plural doctrine. The early church didn't have one person doing all the teaching and all was that. No, they continued in the apostles, plural doctrine, and in fellowship, plural doctrine, and in breaking bread one to another, and God added to the church, plural. So you have to be careful when you get in, you get related to leadership that don't relate to nobody. They do their own thing. That's not the body of Christ. In fact, that's oxymoron, the body of Christ. It's like the body. So the hand does his own thing. And so the hand is all the body. No, the hand is not all the body. So therefore, can't no one person be the sole interpreter of the doctrines of the faith of the church? I submit that to you. I submit that to you that we together, we, we become one voice when we bring together the collective mind of God. God. If God talks to one person, don't you think God is big enough to talk to other people? There is no human being can hold the sum totality of God. Even Moses, he said, Moses, you can't even see my face and live. I'm going to put you in the hinder part of me. And Moses, when he went with God and communicated with God on the mountain, when he came down to the mountain, sometimes his face was shining so that the people couldn't even stand to see his face. He had to put a veil over him. Well, you know, I've been with God. I've been with God all day. I've been with God all night. And yet you just as evil and mean. That's some people. You, you've been with God all day and all night, but you so spiritual. You know what? We have to be careful. We have to see ourselves as members of the body of Christ individually, but yet collectively. So now I want. So therefore, we today, even more so than others before, we see that there are apostles. We see that you, there are apostles on this network. There are prophets. There are evangelists. There are pastors. There are teachers. And there's a mix. There are apostles who walk in the apostolic as a prophet. They are apostle prophets. Some are apostle evangelists. Some are uh, uh, apostle uh, pa apostle pastor, apostolic pastor. Some are apostle teacher. So if you take the fivefold and you and you mix it, you come out with twenty five. You have the apostle apostle the apostle prophet, the apostle evangelist, the apostle pastor, apostle teacher. You got the prophet. You got the prophet whose primary is a prophet, secondary is an apostle. Primary, primary, prophet, prophet. Some are prophetic evangelists. Some are, are prophet, prophetic pastors. Some are, are, are prophets, are prophetic teachers. They are teachers and then they are prophetic teachers. So you got then they're evangelistic teachers, depending upon how God gives you. So there's different mixes, gift mixes. And then you've got the you got those mixes in with the spiritual mix, and then with a, a natural mix, a person that is, is 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 born as a perceiver. They can perceive and prophesy according to a measure of a God-given gift. They see the world through a prophetic lens. And so when they begin, when God give them, when they receive Christ as the Holy Spirit, and then they receive the prophetic gift, they may have the gift of prophecy. They may have the gift of word of knowledge, uh, the working of miracles, the word of wisdom might all go along with that gift of prophecy or as a perceiver in Romans. And then on top of that, they may be given the gift of the prophet in the fivefold. You see what I'm saying? So by the time we mix it, we have to decide and understand what am I and then my personality. And so if I'm still a saint, I have to be equipped. It. God began to deal with me one time. I was going through some things and, and God said, so Brentson, are you a saint? I said, well, yes, I'm a believer. I'm a saint. He said, so 
you walk in the office and work of an apostle, but I, you know, I know my specific is I'm an apostle prophet. My, 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 my primary gifting is an apostle, but I also walk in the office of the prophet as well. Uh, in my stronger measure of my gifting, he said, so, 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 so if you're an apostle, um, who is your pastor? I'm like, huh? Who, 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 who equips you from a pastoral standpoint? Who teaches you? Who, who do you sit up under? You say you understand. To understand is also means to stand under. So I use the word understand. I stand under. Who, who you under? Who teaches you? Who, who do you listen to? Who has an ear? Who has your ear? Who's a teacher for you? Who's an evangelist? Who, who is your evangelist? Who holds you accountable? Will you take the quiz? Are you evangelistic? Paul told Timothy, do the work of an evangelist. So who judges and who promotes you and who gets you going and who, who, who really challenges you to be evangelistic in doing the work of the evangelist? Huh? Who, Princeton, Princeton. So I had to think about it. I said, wow, as an apostle, I'm still a saint. And so if you've given apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers to equip the saints, guess what? No matter what gifting or office you operate in or a combination, you still need the combo of an apostle, a prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, or many apostles, plural. Some of you are what well, I got one apostle. That's my spiritual covering, my one apostle. Well, maybe, maybe because of who you are and what God does and how God uses you, he might need you to have more than one apostle as your equipping process. Based upon your assignments, based upon your call, based upon your struggles, based upon your fight, based upon your warfare within the body of Christ, God has provided apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers to equip you as a saint. And as saints working with each other, saints are also motivating and inspiring each other. So having said all that, now let's take a look now and let's go back to the job description of the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher. Let's go back now. Now, well, Brinson, this is the way I see it. Okay. Okay. This is the way I feel. Okay, okay. Well, I want you to lay your feelings aside right now. And I want to go back and I want to read the job description. One of the things that I have began to do in my maturation is to begin and, and what I do to identify as a saint of God who impacts my life. As a saint of God, who and what are and where are my equippers? Who are the apostles that equip me? The prophets that provide equipping for me? The evangelists that, in, that provide the equipping for me? The pastoral, the pastors that provide the equipping for me? And the teachers, what, what are they? You know, you know, we got a lot of people that have mental health issues. You you, you you know, you might be suffering mental health and where a wellness, but maybe you need to begin to look at where the pastoral people in your life, the, the pastoral people. Some of you are, are, are frustrated because who what the, what is the teaching? What is the prophetic word for you? Who helps you set strategy? You 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 are here and there and you all over the place. It seems like it's hard for you to sit down and put your strategy together. Could it be that you need a, to attach yourself to some good apostolic leadership that can help you understand strategy? All of that is important. So let's look at it. Let's look at, let's look at, let's, let's read the job description. So, well, Brinson, I'm part of the fivefold ministry. Hallelujah. I'm apostle, Dr. So-and-so. I am prophet, so-and-so. I'm evangelist, so-and-so. I'm teacher, so-and-so. I'm prophet, teacher. I'm pastor, prophet. Okay, okay, that's fine. That's your title, which is your summary of your task. That means you have an assignment. You're telling me the summary of your assignment and your assignment is based upon your purpose and your destiny. What is your purpose? 
What, where do you, uh, where are you assigned? Based upon your assignment and your purpose comes your title. So, and based upon how you handle your title and your assignment comes your technology, how you do. And so Paul said, how you do it is about love. The, the way you do it is an excellent way of love. First Corinthians 13, for love, you got to have love. The, how Your modality of how you activate and participate in your assignments and your equipment has to come out of the channel of love. Or else you're sounding brass and a tinkering sound. Okay, so let's look at, let's go back now. And we want to spend some time in really taking a look at the job description. I believe that the church is the way where it is now. It needs to always, God said, on this rock, I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I don't care how much hell around the church, in the church, come after the church. It can't win. It can't win. He said, I, I Christ said, I build my church. Now, you may have a church, but are you in Christ's church? It may be your church. It's the difference between your church, the family church and Christ's church. Now, the family church and your church should be a part of Christ's church. And if Christ is the head leader of the church, he does not contradict himself. So if he said he gave some to be apostles, to be prophets, not tisses, prophets, to be evangelists, to be pastors, to be teachers, to equip the saints, then these persons and those typings and various progressions should be part of your lifestyle and equipping you to be what God has called you to become. So let's look at then us, the fivefold. What? It, so attention. All apostles, attention, all prophets, attention, all pastors, attention, all teachers, attention, all evangelists, attention, all saints, saints, those persons that God has gifted to be, this is their job description. And based upon their job description, your encounter with them should main bring forth and be a manifestation of fruit or should bring forth something that said you were involved. Now, I know I'm getting down to the wire of my time. So whatever I don't finish today, I will be picking up on the next broadcast. So I see this series is going to go to uh, series number six. We're in series five. But I want us to, to start now. So we're going to look at it. We're going to go. And wherever we stop, we're going to pick up next time in, in series number six. So let's look at it. Ephesians chapter four. Ephesians chapter four. So some of y'all probably need to type it out, put it in 14 to 15 font and underline each passage in this Ephesians passage and every now and then do inventory on your life. Do inventory on your life. Inventory on life. Inventory on your life. It's very important. It's very important. But we're going to stop now because I see my time is out. But we're going to begin to move in what God has called us to be. Until next time, be blessed. The preceding program was brought to you by the Holy Spirit Broadcasting Network, HSBN Television. <laughs>